There we are, Sky This Month, February 9th through March 8th. You've seen the picture before. Uh, that's uh, Schwatka Lake in Whitehorse. Lovely picture, wish I'd taken that. So, what have I got? Spring tides, slightly higher than January. Lunar conjunctions, Saturn, Jupiter, a conjunction of Venus and Mars, an unsupermoon, and an occultation of Antares, which the New Brunswick bunch would have got to watch, but we won't. And then there's a trivia question, which uh, it confused me. And I'm a mechanical engineer. It confused me for 15 minutes. Um, but I figured it out. So away we go. Spring tides, January 12th and 13th. Uh, this new moon you see right here. Can you see the cursor on the screen moving around? Yes. Good. Yeah. Um, that's a new moon, 5.22 p.m. on Friday, today. Okay. So it was a new moon. And perigee is like then. So, uh, high tides, because the closer the moon is, the higher the tides are. You can see the variation in here. This is the low tide, and it starts climbing as the moon goes away. But for some reason, the highest tides happen up here about two days afterwards. So you get a real swing from the super low to the super high. Then you get the daily wiggle due to the sun and back again. Anyway, I find it interesting because, well, I've done this before. You've seen some of the pictures. So, yeah, don't plan your uh, beach barbecue for uh, tomorrow, 8 o'clock in the morning, okay? Because there won't be a beach. And on the 10th, tomorrow, right? Yeah. Uh, here's this very, very thin new moon tomorrow at about 545. And that will be just a tiny little crescent here. And about two degrees up and to the right is Saturn, which is headed for superior conjunction. Anyway, that is tomorrow evening. Good luck. It's not very high off the horizon. This little mush down at the bottom is Stellarium's generic tree line. So you're a few degrees off the horizon. If you haven't got a good view, well, you're SOL. Later, February 14th, we've got the moon and Jupiter. And this is 6.45 p.m., uh, just in time for Valentine's Day. And it helps, yes, to know exactly where the moon is and Jupiter are. They're the two brightest things in the sky, so you can't really miss them. Um, now, that's the shot there. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40 almost 50 degrees. This is just past halfway to the zenith. Zoom in a little bit. And there you are. They're about two and a half, three degrees. Now, the little, the, if you don't use Stellarium, these are the little red bars. When you lock onto something, it shows up. It doesn't actually have rays, as we know. And then if you really zoom in, And these, I'm told, are really, really accurate. The depiction of Jupiter itself, the red spot timing is apparently bang on. I don't know. And this is right after Europa leaves the disk of Jupiter. It actually transits it. And Stellarium shows it as just a little circle 
on Jupiter, but as soon as it clears it, it shows it star-like because you can actually see it separate if you have a good telescope, which I don't. But for those of you who are interested and, uh, well, it's not too late at night, so you could get away with it. There's all four moons quite close in. Hmm. And its shadow starts a transit across Jupiter here about 20 minutes after it comes away from in front of Jupiter. Next, this will be not easy at all. This is five degrees right here, I believe. Uh, conjunction of Venus and Mars, February 22nd, 645. And of course, our weather being what it is, good luck. You're going to have to have a southeast view, which isn't easy, and it's going to have to be clear. But I pointed out, you can just see that teeny little speck. Venus will be about 150 times brighter than Mars. Uh, but, hey, it's worth a shot. Next. Yeah. I tend to be cranky the older I get. And you hear all this stuff about supermoons and yada, yada, yada. Um, this is a good picture showing from 2010 to 2011, uh, apogee, perigee. So I defy anyone with 20, 23 chromosome pairs to say they can tell the difference between a large full moon and a small full moon. They're the size of an aspirin tablet held at arm's length. Show me a 14% difference in that, and you're a robot. So, and as I put down here, yeah, forgive me for this, but it, I do get annoyed when people invent new terms for known scientific terms. And here's this occultation of Antares, which... The guys in New Brunswick might be able to see, weather permitting, March 3rd. Uh, we will not. It's not the typical 30,000 feet of clouds. It's the 1,000 or 3 or 6 miles of rock between us and the moon. So it happens about three hours before it rises. So there we are. And this little circle up here is Antares. Now, the moon comes across this way, so it would occult it on the bright side, and the reappearance would be on the dark side, so it would just blink into view, which should be cool. I wish I'd been able to see these more often in my earlier life, but I didn't. Okay. And now, for something completely different. I'll let you read it. Tell me when you've read the last point and want the answer. Okay, well, I'm I'm ready. <laughs> Bill's looking curiously. Making sure I can start my own presentation. Sorry. Oh, okay. And apparently, Doctor Diener is looking at it. Okay, I'll I'll move along. Okay. Uh, it may not be quite what you think. This, this stuff here is just, why do we have leap years and only some of them and not all of them and so on and so on? It's because of this 365 and almost exactly a quarter. Okay. 
366 and a quarter yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. No. And this is an actual fact I discovered. Read this bit. Forty years ago, they had this on the SAT exam. Yeah, and nobody had the right answer. Well, no. the correct answer is not on the list. <laughs> it was A, B, C, and D, three, nine, a third, and five. And the answer is four. Yeah. Anybody? Oh, Bill's looking confused. Or I'm disgusted. always confused. Sorry? I'm visualizing the gear turning. Yes. <clears throat> Here's but it's why. A, it's a circumference issue. Yes. Here it is. You come up with the ratio of diameters. Three to one means it's got to turn three times. Correct. That would be correct if it were a gear on a straight rack if the big gear was stretched out straight absolutely correct three times but it's not it goes all the way around and the little gear has to do that rotation in addition the other extreme is if you put a pin in the wall and turn the little gear around it now, the big gear has a diameter of effectively zero. It doesn't roll around the rack. It just has to rotate. And the actual answer, the formula for any small gear D and a big gear capital D, number of rotations for a complete circuit is big D over little d plus one. So yeah. the Earth does 366 and a quarter rotations relative to the stars every year. Because if it weren't rotating relative to the sun, if it were tidally locked, like the moon is to us, the moon still makes a full rotation uh, every 28, no, 27 or so days because to a full moon it makes actually more than one rotation so so much for the trivia um there bidia bidia that's all folks <laughs>